Now we're going to transition to the Q&A. Sometimes this, usually lately, it's been going pretty long, but I try to answer all your questions, and then we'll split this up. So if you got to go, and time's uh, precious, I get it, so just take off. I'll see you in the next one. But thanks so much. Thumbnail up, and or thumbnail up. Thumbs up. Uh, let's continue subscribing. Let's break into the Q&A and go from there. Burp, burp. Uh, as an ex-employee in IB, I'd say hell, hell no to 24-7 stock market. Yeah. Well, you know, you can buy it just that it goes in later, just like on Robinhood. You buy it as after hours trading, and then the trades get executed later on. Oh, let's see. Fire sale. Yeah. I think there's going to be more of a fire sale moving forward. And uh, I talked about DCAing into alts yesterday. So... I think the strategy I'm going to go with is, of course, every day I'm going to keep buying Bitcoin and Ethereum unless things get super crazy and starts to really go down really fast. Then I'll wait a little bit and then probably pick it up, uh, probably increase. No, not probably. It will increase. So as, as the price of Bitcoin goes down, it's called dynamic DCA and you buy a little bit more. So right here on these alts, these two that I'm going to pick up, I'm just going to pick them up every other week. So the one that I like It'll be on a Sunday, because that's when all the dips are. And I buy that one, the next week I buy the other one. And it's not even that much. It's like 20% uh, of what I normal put in. Beauty day, fire sale. Thanks, Jeff. I try to give you both sides of the same story. Not just hopium and not all doom and gloom, but both. Uh, can you go over the blue chips? The only blue chips, in my opinion, are Bitcoin, Ethereum. Past that, it's anybody's guess. I have no idea. But I own a bunch of L1s and, and then uh, also some DGEN plays, which has uh, done okay so far. And uh, you can find that on Damn DGEN, the second channel. Shilling. All right. <laughs> Rob, give us your new all pick. I don't follow the news much at all. Give me some cookies. No. That's, I'm going to keep that one close to the best. I'll let your imaginations run wild, what I think it is. It is an L1, or both of them are L1s. And, you can go from there. So this is a great question. Julian says, when do you think the Fed will pivot? This year, 2023. Well, if we just listen to Ray, what he talks about, and it was a really good point. Somebody's asset is another person's liability. You know, the banks, they own your house unless you paid off the mortgage. So that is their asset. And of course, your house is a liability unless you do what we do, which is rent things out. So when he talks about you have to increase the interest rate to cover all those debts because otherwise it wouldn't really make much sense. So in all honesty, if you really want to think about it rationally, if, if inflation is 8.5% that they tell us and the interest rates are four or four point, whatever it is right now, it would stand to reason that we'd have to get around up to the six, sevens, or eights. And I know people will say, well, that's crazy. How can it be that high? Look, this house that I'm in right here, uh, we got this 18 years ago, and we thought we were getting a steal at 7.45% APR. Seriously, that's what it was. And then I remember, actually, uh, in the when I was in the military, there was a couple of... Uh, well, actually, when I got out, I, I, I met a couple couple of, uh, of of medics and nurses who were like from the old school days of like Vietnam War era era, and they would tell us that like they thought that a, a, an APR for a, for a house was great at eighteen percent. So it's all it's all relative. So do I think uh, when will the Fed will pivot? They'll probably pivot when they can see that inflation rate go down. And uh, hopefully it won't uh, totally destroy uh, the emerging economy. But let's be honest, we've had a pretty good for quite some time. That's what I got. Yeah. Gabe, Gabe Coca says even Tim Dillon. I don't know who Tim Dillon is. Tim Dillon? I thought he was a comedian. This might be a good <laughs> buy right now. It might be. Who knows? No one knows. That's why that's the whole beauty of uh, dollar cost averaging. And I understand, like, like me and Ben are going to go around around on Friday, I'm sure, about this. But uh, I think 
and I'll have to verify with him, but I, Ben had always talked about how in 2014, he went in way too heavy in the alts and he got crushed. I think that's, that's actually the problem. I think if you, if you would have invested into just Bitcoin back then, at maybe 90% or 95% and just take 5% into alts, you wouldn't have really felt it, right? So that's, that's, my, that's my whole thesis. I'm like, well, I'm gonna put most into Bitcoin, Ethereum, 80%, 90% plus, and then I'll just dabble a little bit into the alts and just see where we go, because who knows? Never know. <laughs> it's funny. It's all about risk and just hedging your bet. I don't know. Ben is, we're both bears right now, I'll be honest with you. Uh, oh, Vida Sodium Chloride <laughs> says, hey, Rob, I tried sweat, and there was one caveat in my opinion. The app count steps if you move your phone with your arm from one side to another. I think people could exploit that. Or maybe they get a really strong shoulder. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, sweat is my favorite so far. If you, I've been talking about it forever, so I'm going to stop talking about it because people think I'll, you know, shit. I'm not getting paid by them. No, I do like that app. It's fun. You just walk around, they give you sweat coins. And they're kind of like rewards. So you can buy like goofy stuff on their merchandise, on their merch website. That's all. And it'll be a, it'll be a crypto Q3. 6.5 says, I like some DGen coin trading. Why not? Got to live a little bit, right? Uh, do you think Sol can still hit 103? Yeah. And the reason why is I know some people hate Solana because they say it's the, you know, very heavily VC backed and uh, there's problems with it right now, shutdowns. And people say, well, it's not really a shutdown, it's a slowdown. I don't care. So the thing you have to think about is who's backing Solana? Well, the guy we were just talking about, Sam Bakeman Fried and FTX, they're backing it like crazy. And also, we just did a story a couple of days ago where Ledger came out and said, yeah, we're going to help uh, push forward uh, Web3. And what we're going to do is we're going to have our own uh, online wallet, kind of like MetaMask, and we're going to uh, leverage the power of Ethereum and Solana. So if you take a look about you know, people who are actually getting into it, Solana is, a, is one of those that uh, could do pretty well. But we also thought the same thing about other cryptos, which will remain nameless on this show. And uh, so you have to really diversify. Best thing I can ever tell you. Uh, Joby says, do you recommend taking a loan against my crypto right now? Joby, I cannot recommend that. And uh, as you may know, uh, I had took a loan out for my house and uh, that was through Celsius and they, uh, they liquidated me. Those sons that, no, it, remember, and I talked about this before, the, the, the only person to blame was me because I was over in Europe and they gave me plenty of chances. They were emailing me and, and putting it through the, through the app. And uh, I just said, ah, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. And I didn't get to it. And they, they liquidated me. But here's the thing. You got to remember, like people say, oh, you got liquidated, so you lost everything. No, you didn't lose everything. So whatever the loan was for, so let's just say it was for 200000 right? Let's just say 100000 just round numbers. Very easy, right? So you have 100000 and the loan could have been for 2x of your Ethereum, because it was for Ethereum. 2x Ethereum, which would give you around 8%. 3x of your Ethereum, give you 6% uh, interest rate, or it can be 4x Ethereum, and you only have to pay out 1% of your interest rate uh, for the loan. So you have to collateralize it over collateralize it. So let's just say that, I don't know how much it was. Let's say it was like 50 Ethereum for 100,000, whatever, right? At, for just 100,000. So you want 100,000? We got to give us 2x at least. So you got to give them 100 Ethereum for collateral. When you get liquidated, uh, just know that, first of all, it's a taxable event, so that sucks. But the second of all is that they liquidate the just the crypto to cover that loan that they gave you. It's not like you're gonna, they're going to liquidate 200%, 300%, or 400%. They are going to liquidate it. Albeit, the prices were a little bit different, but whatever. So who's to blame? I'm to blame. So right now, do you recommend taking a loan? No, because right now, the only way I would say recommend a loan is if you're Michael Saylor and you've got collateral up the wazoo. But if you don't, don't. That's it. <laughs> okay, I won't bother. That is a bother. 
Sure. If that's what it was, that's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. So, and then hazmat. <laughs> At Joby, maybe DCA long-term, that way you're gonna save for slow with control. It makes sense to me. It's just that uh, you, now you have to decide if you're gonna DCA on the way down as the crypto goes down or, and that's just if it does, right? Like, you know how we're always in this, and I talked about this yesterday, you know, everybody was so damn sure about uh, December, 2021, even me, I didn't pan out. And do you remember how everybody was so damn sure about the specific crypto that collapsed to zero and that didn't pan out? Do you remember how people were so sure about fill in the blank of how much they were sure about something and it didn't really work out. So to me, I'm just like, you know, everybody's so sure that we're going to, some people say Bitcoin 25K, some people say 22K, some people say 12K, and some people say 8K, which means that our market cap will probably go well below 1 trillion, probably below 800, 700 billion. If that's the case, then alts will get destroyed. And everybody so far is like, that's what's happening. I don't know if, uh, if I can say that. So that's why instead of me dollar cost averaging my full amount of what I usually would do, let's just say it's a hundred bucks a day, right? I'm just gonna say, okay, I'm not gonna DCA uh, every day. I'm gonna do it every week. And I'm gonna do it for 20% to 50% of just my usual one day amount. So if it comes up and, I, and let's say that this particular crypto that I'm into goes down by 50%, 50%, not a big deal because I didn't just you know say, I'm just putting it all in there. And I don't have any money to put into like the blue chipper, which is Bitcoin and Ethereum. But let's just say it goes the opposite way. Let's say for some reason, Jerome Powell comes out. It's like, you know what? A quarter basis points. The Ukraine war. You know what? We have a ceasefire and we're going to discuss different peace talks. And then, you know what? In China, they lift that, they lift that ban, the lockdowns out and uh, the supply chains increase. Who knows? I don't know. That's why I diversify. A says, uh, enjoy this teacher. They're cheap. You can't, you can't blame that. If you have a, a long-term vision, it's okay. And, uh, and then of course, I look, if you got invested in 2021, you're not gonna be a millionaire today. Actually, that's not true. You could be a millionaire if you sold the right time. But if you held the whole time, probably not, not too happy right now. It's okay, I did the same thing in 2017, 2018. It's all right. Just stick around. If you don't like the price, it'll change. Just might take a little bit of time. Uh, hold on. How did you handle your Luna loan? I didn't take a loan on Luna. I sold Luna. Um, but I didn't sell all of it like I should have. And then I was dollar cost averaging it. And that was the beauty. I was dollar cost averaging Luna all the way to the day that it would crash. And what was great about it is that I was not dollar cost averaging a ton of money into it. So because I was doing dollar cost averaging for a lot of different cryptos. And uh, yeah, I lost a good amount. That's, uh, that's just how it goes. Again, uh, I don't have to have everything be a winner. I don't. They don't all have to be a thousand X. I just gotta be successful in one, maybe two. And so far it's doing okay. I mean, it's from 2017 until today. That's all right. And then moving into from today, let me use quick math. Let's say in four years from today, 2025, 2026, uh, same thing will probably go, roll around again. Uh, let's see. I'm in. AK says, I have my original Luna. But I made about 700 bucks when it hit the bottom from four bucks I bought. Yeah. What can you do? And who knows? It might come back. I don't think so. But uh, hey. I can't wait to say much about that. Oh, yeah. So Mark Lavana says, good day, Rob, with Tesla doing a five to one. I thought it was a 10 to one, but I guess I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, doing a five to one stock split coming up, do you think that it's dropped low enough to be a winner? Don't know, but uh, I do say it's uh, pretty darn low. So I might, uh, actually I not might, I put a little bit more money into it because it could keep going lower, but it could go up, I don't know. So I just uh, dollar cost average into uh, Tesla as well. 
Tesla, Amazon. I stopped the Mara, but I still own Mara. And I do own Coinbase. Coin, but very little. I don't even think about it. But uh, I know I'm underwater with that one. <laughs> Frenchie says, many YouTubers were sure of 100K Bitcoin in January. Yeah, and I was one of them. I didn't think it was 100K. I thought it was 150K. It wasn't right. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And you know what's funny to me? Correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like as soon as the markets crash, uh, all the, all the, not the advice, but all the comments are like conservative, conservative, conservative. But once we start going up and we hit this parabolic, uh, next, the, the next bull run, which I didn't even think May was that much of a parabolic bull run. But once we really start to go up, you're going to see that go out the window. And people are like, you know what? There's this great crypto and I got to get in. You got to get into it. It's awesome. Thousand to one. Sell your house. Get into it. It's just amazing what, uh, what bear markets will do. It just wipes away all the trash. It, uh, Elon Musk had a pretty good way. It's like, it's like a financial enema. Gets rid of all the, all the junk out of you because you never really need it anyhow. Could be true. It's true. <laughs> Yeah, look at look at Coin Bureau. Look at guy and his stuff. Great stuff. Uh, Beauty says not some. Moon is a joke. Didn't start out as a joke. So it was a pretty good one. But uh, yeah. Oh, so Danny Butts. It's fine. Uh, what do you think about the AVAX coins? Luna still holds. So remember, I know people are concerned about this, but those are still locked up. Because with uh, AVAX and Avalanche, their lockup period is still out months in advance. So they can't just like unlock them. Think you, you lock them up in Avalanche. I have a boatload of Av Avalanche and it's locked up. And uh, actually you have a, a stake pool that you can feel free to, to go at it. But uh, mine's not for like four more months. I can't touch it. Which is a good thing, I think. Yes, exactly. Thank God they're locked up. Because can you imagine that? All going down. Uh, yeah, Howard says, weird correlation between Bitcoin and the U.S. equity market, NASDAQ. Not really. I mean, it is, but, it's, but it isn't. Because just like that article we talked about here, where... Uh, where'd it go? The income inequality from BlockWorks. Let me show this to you. You know how they, they talk about people who make over 100,000? Uh, those are the ones that are into crypto because they use it as a speculation asset. And then the ones 50,000 or below um, are using it just for transactions. So when you have high net individuals, what do they do? Well, they buy different assets, stocks, real estate, bonds, and of course they dabble into crypto. So it, it stands to reason that if you got a good amount of money, you're probably over here and probably over here. But if you're uh, more of a speculator and you want to talk about growth stocks and tech, it's in NASDAQ. And of course, what is, what is crypto? To me, it's, well, it's software, but it's, it's growth and it's uh, tech. So they, they pretty much, if you want to take a look at correlation, it's between these two. So negative 2.66. Let me see how bad are we? Oof, going even lower. Yeah. Let's stop talking about it. Maybe I'm jinxing it. Well, the crypto zombie, I have, yeah. Remember, remember, these are just cycles. These are the most normal things. I used to hate the word recession and uh, the bear, the term bear market, but it's just, this is a natural progress. It's like spring, summer, fall, and winter, natural cycles of life. And it's the same thing with economic markets. Now, this is a great question. I wonder how many will end up in prison from all the scams that happen when the laws are passed. The bigger question is, how many can we go back retroactively? Not for sure, not a lawyer, but I can tell you scams are scams no matter what they are. And uh, some you can say are scams, but some, and as I've talked to more of the crypto OGs in, in Puerto Rico, there is some insider stuff 
way bigger than what people believe it is. And that's just the truth. So if you were thinking that, oh, there's probably some backroom deals, you're right. Uh, <laughs> Vanessa says, I'm accumulating gaming alts in the bottom. Do you have any favorites? Um, yeah, so Gensu Kishi is a big one because remember what like I talk about all the time. Will it make the cut, the CUTT? How big is the community? What's the utility? What does it actually do? Uh, what has the team done before? And how are the tokenomics going to get dumped on? And with uh, Gensu Kishi, it's ranked, it was nothing in December. And it just came out and I, we caught it up early. We talked about it in Dan Gen, And it went from nothing to uh, over a dollar. Now it's like at 74 cents or somewhere around there. And it, it has all the built-in gamers because it, uh, it, it launched on PS4. It launched on uh, Nintendo Switch. It was on iOS and Android. So they already had millions of gamers built in. It was like a, it's like a no, no brainer. So there's that one. And then there's, um, what's that one? With the uh, ghost token, G-H-S-T. Abagachi, yeah, that's it. I think that's a, that's, a pretty, that's a pretty cool game for people who like those types of games. I personally don't, but they got a really strong community, so I like that. Cornucopias could be great uh, from Cardano because card, everything's pretty cheap, reasonably fast on Cardano, especially when they start to, to build and open up the, whatever that threshold is they're talking about. And then games. Oh, there is a big game from Fame coming out, which was used by uh, MetaHero to digitalize all the, the MMA fighters. And it looks like a real great game. And of course, probably um, Big Time will be great because just because of the graphics and the marketing they have behind it. So yeah. And I probably forgot some, so that's just the best I can do. And then Gala, yeah, I forgot about Gala games. Gala could be huge because they have a, they have a, like a magazine of different games that you can actually play. They're not all out, but they look pretty fun. Like I even play them. What do you think about Axie Infinity? Not my kind of thing, just isn't. And uh, I mean, I do like that part about the scholarships and the ability for other people to play and make money. But right now, like I, I, I tend to think like, is that sustainable, that whole way that they do things? I know we've talked about this before, and they probably made some, some changes, so I can't talk about it. I don't really understand it that well, so I won't uh, invest into it. I can only, although some people do say, just invest into it and then do your research, but I can't sometimes. All right. Miranda's will be huge, yeah. Splinterlands. Yeah, Starless looks great. It looks great. And I think that's built on Solana. Correct me if I'm wrong. So that should be pretty good. Mr. Bouncer says, have you checked the legitimacy of that in-game video of the MMA vid from MetaHero? So some people are saying, well, that's just a cut screen. We'll see how it is. Look, I've seen what they've done with uh, uh, MetaHero. And I got a... I'll probably say it. I got a, a look at it. Looks legit. Doesn't look as crisp as maybe that cut screen, but it hell, I'll tell you right now, looks a hell of a lot better than the blockiness that is uh, Sandbox. But Sandbox, I mean, it works pretty well for um, uh, Minecraft. So whatever. File coin with file coin with DCing. For me, no. But for you, potentially, if you believe in the Again, if you believe in the project and the, and the uh, ability or the utility that could be as far as like uh, storage on the blockchain, sure. I can understand where it is, but uh, not for me. I'm not gonna, I mean, not right now. I'm not gonna say like, okay, I might, at the top two, like a DC is for ultimate to pick Filecoin. No, not really. <laughs> Great question. Howard Jablo says, will Ethereum upgrade make it by June 2022? First of all, not a chance. There's not a snowball's chance in hell it's going to happen. Second of all, uh, Vitalik even came out and said, it's going to happen in August. But we covered this a couple of days ago. And he said, it could potentially happen in August. But you have to remember that we could have delays because there could be some hiccups and problems. So maybe September, maybe October. Maybe not today. Maybe not tomorrow, but soon. Seven years later, we'll see. I'm rooting for them because uh, I'd like that to happen. Although, just remember, we talked about this as well. Uh, 
That's just the that's just the merge. And when that happens, that will not affect Ethereum gas prices. They'll still be the same. Sorry. Where to send my project for you to review? I don't. The only projects that I review are the people that I know and trust and have already vetted the project. I get 20 offers a day on my email, which is why like on here, see, damn it. See where it says, Dan will never contact you. I'll never contact you. So you can send it to me, but I, I, I'm sorry to tell you, it'll probably, I'll probably delete it like everything else. Sorry. All right. Ah, it's a good day to crush dreams. Sorry. Let's see. How do you buy land in Everdome? So like only letting certain. Yeah, right now you can only buy only certain people can get into it, but uh, I think it's going to be a public sale at some point. I mean, it has to be a public sale at some point. I just don't know when. I'll let you know when I figure it out. Uh, so, so we two point in twenty thirty. Who knows, man? I don't know, Mike. I don't know. Yes, Biggie. Biggie. Hope you're feeling better, buddy. Dan Zach, I'm from the Navy Channel. Yeah, Digital Asset News. My name is Rob. But for the longest time, people just call me Dan. It didn't bother. It's the same thing. Uh, yeah. And Equibit Crypto is right. I can make a cut screen like that and talk about a game that I might make in 10 years. This is Tara List. Show me some game. He's right. Or she is right. We'd like to see the game. But everybody wants more, right? You get, you're going to get one, you know, one actual gameplay. But like, yeah, but that was only 30 seconds. Let me see two minutes. Okay, that was two minutes. Okay, well, let me see, see some other characters until you really get into it. Of course, that's what it is. But I didn't get in. I didn't get into fame because of a stupid game. Um, they actually have two out. One is goofy, I think, but then the second one looks better. But for me, it was all about community again. These guys, they do pay-per-view. Their last pay-per-view they did for MMA 14, uh, they did over uh, a million pay-per-view sales. And that's just like in a small part of, 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 uh, of Europe. They're based in Poland, but they're branching out. And of course, all their fighters are, are influencers. They're like YouTubers and TikTokers and people like that. So one of the provisions is that if you wanted to, to be in fame and actually fight in fame, they're gonna pay you a salary, but a portion of that was in the fame token now. And also, uh, one of the requirements is that you have to actually promote it on your channel. So, I mean, marketing genius right there. Will it make it though? Who knows? I think it will. And that's it, I think we're good. Uh, are you going for a dip? I do it every morning, it's super cold. Hmm. And let's finish up with this. It's this a great, great comment. Lynn says, hey, Rob, love your process, but I was wondering if you could do a sample portfolio video focusing on what profit taking would look like. I struggle with profit taking. I did as well. But I'm trying to make a plan now. That's great. We should do that. And I got, a, I got an idea. So I'm using that app called Sweatcoin because, you know, it's free. And then, of course, uh, people can, they can track their, their steps, which is good. You can get paid in Sweatcoin, which is not going to be a crypto until Q3. But one of the provisions was if you can beat me, because I, I walk a lot. So I'm thinking that no one will beat me. So I think I said, if you are one of the top three people to beat me, I will do a portfolio review live on digital asset news. So maybe when I do that portfolio review, if anybody beats me, doubt it, uh, then I can talk about this is a good, you know, at this point, maybe take profits on these percentages as time goes on. So, yeah, not a bad idea. All right, that's it. So, look, everybody, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate it. And uh, consider subscribing. Do this every day. And uh, hopefully it can, you know, kind of keep your mind straight about uh, where you want to be. But that's it. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios.